Well, no AirTags or Apple TV yet, but to no surprise, Apple's iPhone 12 is here and it's Apple's first 5G phone. Andy here, dropping the latest from Apple's October high speed event. If you wanna be notified when I drop new content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you get an alert. Well guys, it's confirmed. Apple has released new phones that you can spend your hard earned $1,000 on and also blue phones. So now they'll match my hat. But seriously, here's the 411 on what we learned. Yes, the notch remains, but in typical new iPhone release fashion, the iPhone 12 has an upgraded camera and display specs. It also comes with a new A14 chip and also a smaller screen bezel. So this allows them to use more screen real estate. So even though they can use the same footprint of phones, maybe they'll have bigger screens. Okay, so a slightly new physical design and for me, this looks like a blast from the past. The design is a little more squared off, and I think we saw this back when the iPhone 4 came out, 5 maybe? And also more color options. So I mentioned the blue. There's also a red, um, I think a gold as well. But really here, guys, more colors just means more options and um, potentially a bigger customer base. Okay, along with the new design, of course, they've also improved the physical materials they've made the phone with. So here I mean, instead of using glass on the phone, they're using what they're calling a ceramic shield. I think they stole this out of that State Farm commercial with Jake and his sonic shield. So this they claim has a better drop protection. It's a little more durable. Uh, so we'll see, maybe you won't need a screen protector for your phone anymore or Maybe you need two of them, I don't know. And then a real blast from the past, they've resurrected their new MagSafe technology. So this, if you're a Mac owner, uh, like I am, you may have one in your house, but they're old Mac laptops, which had the MagSafe connector that was just a magnet attached to their power cord. And so if you tripped over the cable, it just disconnected so it didn't rip your laptop onto the floor. Well, they took that and they put that now onto the iPhone. And this really just expands Apple's lineup and allows them to sell you a host of new accessories. Also, they're using this for charging. So this is kind of cool. And they're also saying that the iPhone is still Qi compatible and the MagSafe is high power wireless charging, so up to 15 watts. So we'll still fast charge your phone. Kind of cool, it, 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 they showed it a couple times where it automatically lined up because of the magnets perfectly for the wireless charging. So you can just do it with your eyes closed and put it on your charger or attach your wallet thingy to your phone now. Okay, maybe there's more uses for this to come, especially in the aftermarket space. So maybe what I can see is maybe a new belt holster. Guys, dad's out there. You can get a new belt holster maybe coming soon. Stay tuned. Okay, and two of the more serious cool features of the new phones is the introduction of Dolby Vision HDR recording. Now, I don't know a whole lot about Dolby Vision. We've all heard of Dolby uh, through the TVs we purchased and such, but this, I think, just incorporates more data, metadata, into the video recordings, allowing for uh, better processing, screen and image processing. Just, it'll make me look better if I bought a new phone. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And finally, they've made a dual SIM iPhone. So for those of us that hate carrying around two phones, you bought an Android because you want a dual SIM phone, well now Apple has that option. Okay, and yes, very cool, Apple did come out with the iPhone mini that was rumored, and this is, and this is really just a smaller iPhone 12. The same specs, same processor, exact same screen, just smaller, and actually is the same form factor as the iPhone SE, but because of that smaller bezel, it has a, a larger screen by about half inch or so. It does come in at about $100 cheaper than the iPhone 12, so this is just lining up to be the top seller, super popular. It's smaller, so you can reach across it with your thumb. We'll see how this turns out, but I'm expecting this is gonna be a super popular phone. Okay, and then round out the lineup, the two Apple Pro models, the Apple iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max, uh, each with varying levels of 
Pro-ness. But super high-end camera technology built in here. I'm not gonna dive into that camera tech. You can see it here. But along with that is they're introducing a new photo format, Apple Pro Raw, which again, maybe incorporates more data into the photos, allowing for better image processing, something the photo geeks out there might be geeking out over this. And as expected, that's come out on the previous iPad models is a new LiDAR sensor on the Apple Pro models. What is LiDAR? We'll check it out here. LiDAR, which stands for light detection and ranging, really just uses light to measure the distance of objects in space. So this might be useful for enhanced augmented reality applications or for those room mapping applications to measure your room. Um, I'm redoing my office, so maybe I should buy an iPhone 12 so I can measure my room. Okay, and then following suit from our, what we learned on the Apple Watch Series 6 releases uh, recently, Apple's no longer giving you a charger in the box. And in this case, you're not even getting headphones. So they're stripping those out of the box. They're claiming crazy environmental advances here by those savings. The box is smaller. They can ship more on a pallet, yada, yada, yada. Saves them money, great. We don't need chargers anyway, but now we all gotta buy AirPods. Oh, but the, they do ship a charging cable in the box, so that's gonna be a USB-C to lightning cable now. So if you don't have any USB-C chargers, you may have to get a couple of those to take advantage of that fast charging through PD. Okay, and the last thing announced was, as we expected, the HomePod Mini, but really, so what? I'm not a HomePod purchaser myself. I, I have a different smart speaker space, but I think Apple is just trying to play a little more catch up here. It's a smaller HomePod, a little cheaper. And to me, quick glance, it looks like it comes with a lot of the features that a lot of the other smart speakers already have. So. I'm not too crazy about this here, but if you're a HomePod owner or you are in Apple's HomeKit, um, are you a HomeKit user? Maybe this is gonna be useful for you. So that's it guys, that's Apple's October event. New iPhones, 5G, super high speed, ceramic shield, and they're blue. See you next time.